and welcome to our 15th Sunday after Pentecost. And it's so good for you to join us this morning, um, both virtually by Zoom and also Facebook Live, as well as here in person. And it's so wonderful to see Linda this morning, and I'm so thankful that she is feeling so much better. Um, Corey Meyer's birthday is today. Barb Sather's birthday is September 14th. Chad Spearman's birthday is September 17th. Our movie night is uh, this Thursday night at Drive-In Movie. According to um, the temperature thing, we should be good. It, the 50s is as low as it's supposed to get at the time of the movie. Um, it'll be at 7 o'clock a little earlier since we're getting darker earlier. But it's a funny um, uh, family movie, and we'll hope you, you will join us for that. Uh, yoga meets on uh, at, on Fridays at 9.30. Also, she doesn't have a slide in here, uh, but the UMW is collecting money for um, cans for missions. So it's time to look in your, in your uh, bureau or wherever you keep your gloves. And however many gloves you have, that's, uh, you're supposed to make a contribution for each one of those those gloves, and that goes for the UMW's mission effort. Um, our, our, actually, we're meeting outside for, um, for uh, AA. Um, our Ad Council meeting, meeting, which was supposed to be this evening, is actually going to be next, um, next Sunday evening. Um, Senior Fitness Center is open. And um, before we start with that, um, uh, I do need to let you know that um, Vicki Reslup is having her transplant for her cornea um, tomorrow, so you want to keep her in prayer. Uh, she's been waiting a long time for that, and so that's a good thing. Um, uh, Charlene goes for a checkup for her, her tooth um, that was pulled, um, and uh, Vicki Myers had requested prayer for her son, Danny. Um, so are there any other prayer requests? The family of Eric Garcia. Eric Garcia. All righty. He's our employee husband who died. Oh, he did die. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're so sorry to hear that. Yeah. When did that happen? Um, any other prayer requests? All righty. Well, we are going to begin with a song prelude, and I'll just uh, tell you that um, I didn't check what Richard sent me because he sent it to me so late. So he actually, uh, it says verses 5, 6, and 7, so he ends up doing 3, 4, and 5, and so we'll have to do 6 and 7 ourselves, but hopefully uh, we won't be able to get there. We 
No matter what befalls us, the Lord walks with us on the path, <clears throat> bringing us courage and hope. No matter what, we belong to the Lord now and forever. Amen. We come to this time of prayer. 
and intercession. And we want to remember, um, we want to remember uh, definitely Eric Garcia's fam, the family of Eric Garcia and his death and the struggles um, that face the family going forward. Um, we do rejoice that Linda is here with us and she faces uh, an uphill battle <laughs> uh, as most of us that see that there are, there are, um, there's healing, but we have our part to do in it as well. Um, so are there other prayer requests? All righty. Let's go to God in prayer. Loving and merciful God, we come before you today, fresh from a week that has been challenging. Challenges that have caused us worry and strife, and others that bring us clear direction for our lives. In all of this, you're bringing healing and peace for our lives. We offer to you the names of those who are ill, who mourn, who feel lost and are alienated, and are wondering if anyone cares for them. And so, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer as we ask for your healing mercies. Lord, please be with those that are facing surgery and have health concerns. We pray for wisdom for the medical staff as well as for comfort and preparation for those that will go through these. Lord, we lift up those that are struggling from any illness, and we lift up our local community. We ask for continued protection and guidance. We thank you for our first responders, and especially those firefighters who are working so hard, the thousands of them, Lord. We pray for protection over them. We pray for those that have given their lives in service, and we ask that you would be with the police and with military and with uh, health workers as they seek to risk themselves and their own comfort for the safety of others. Lord, we ask that you would be with all of those in authority, locally, statewide, nationally, and globally. We pray that our, our own government and our own country would seek you and seek civility in all that they do. Lord, we pray for the welfare of the world because we don't live here by ourselves. We feel comfort in the fact that we have been so little impacted by the virus in our area, but let us remember, Lord, that we are a global community. We pray for pastors and religious leaders all over the earth. We ask that you would give them wisdom and guidance in what they have before them. Help them make wise decisions and help them lead your people through your word. We ask that you would be with any who are struggling with addiction, depression, or any other struggle, and especially those unspoken requests. You know our hearts, Lord, and we just pray that you would intervene in the, each of these requests. We ask that you would be with Bobby Abbott, LaVon Caton, Linda Clutter, Jacqueline Collier, Dora May Crawford, Steve Davis, Marilyn and Dick Eagles, Wayne Garcia, Isabel Geibel, Reverend Margaret Gillian, Keith Green, Tracy Gunther, Debbie Hall and family, Sue Jenkins, Eric, uh, Gar the, uh, A Eva McLean, <clears throat> Dakota Miller, the Miller family in Iowa, Cheryl and Linda Mix, Vicki and Gerald Myers, Shirley Myers, Wayne and Alice Phillips, Roy and Vicki Reslett, Sherry Robbins, Marilyn Roberta, Joe Roker, Charlene Schaefer, Monica Schaefer, Tom Sanderson, the Ziegler family as Luke fights brain cancer, Cloetta Spearman, Matthew Stanley, Byron and Amy Ulrich, Wendy Wallace, Linda Wilson, Lord, and we lift up those who have lost one loved ones, especially Eric Garcia's family, Ray Abbott and his family, the death of his brother, Alice Wardlow and, and the death of her sister, Linda Wilson and her family and the death of her brother, Betty Combs and her family and the death of Bob, Ron Cooper and his family and the death of his dad, the family of Peggy Duran, Betty family and family, 
the family of Jim Ford, Reverend Regina Hickman and family and the loss of her son, the family of Walt Lambert, Anthony Lobato and family, the family of Linda Damaris, Linda Mix and family, the family of Bob Myers, Shirley Myers and family, Bishop Karen and family, Claudia and Jolene Robinson. Lord, we ask that you would hear our prayers as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Who was that? Tom Sanderson. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is here. <clears throat> Our Old Testament scripture is Exodus 14, verses 19 through 31. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side, so neither was near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh had, that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. The epistle reading is Romans 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome each other like Christ. Welcome the person who is weak in faith, but not in order to argue about differences of opinion. One person believes in eating everything, while the weak person only eats vegetables. Those who eat must not look down on the ones who don't, and the ones who don't eat must not judge the ones who do, because God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? They stand or fall before their own Lord, and they will stand because the Lord has the power to make them stand. One person considers some days to be more sacred than others, while another person considers all days to be the same. Each person must have their own conviction. Someone who thinks that a day is sacred thinks that way for the Lord. Those who eat, eat for the Lord because they thank God. And those who don't eat, don't eat for the Lord, and they thank the Lord too. We don't live for ourselves, and we don't die for ourselves. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to God. This is why Christ died and lived, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you look down on your brother or sister? We will all stand in front of the judgment seat of God. 
Because it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow down to me, and every tongue will give praise to God. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. Parable of the unforgiving servant. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Should I forgive as many as seven times? Jesus said, not just seven times, but rather as many as 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle accounts, they brought to him a servant who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. Because the servant didn't have enough to pay it back, the master ordered that he should be sold along with his wife and children and everything he had, and that the proceeds should be used as payment. But the servant fell down, kneeled before him, and said, Please be patient with me, and I'll pay you back. The master had compassion on that servant, released him, and forgave the loan. When that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants, who owed him 100 coins. He grabbed him around the throat and said, Pay me back what you owe me. And then his fellow servant fell down and begged him, Be patient with me, and I'll pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he threw him into prison and slowly paid back his debt. When his fellow servants saw what happened, they were deeply offended. They came and told their master all that happened. The master called the first servant and said, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you appealed to me. Shouldn't you also have mercy on your fellow servants, just as I had mercy on you? His master was furious and handed him over to the guard responsible for punishing children until he had paid the whole debt. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if you don't forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Just as the past few weeks have been difficult sermons, this one too is difficult. If you take all of the scriptures together, you understand it is hard. So let us go to God in prayer. God of love and protection, thank you so much for being with us and guiding us during difficult and scary times. Thank you for protecting us with your love. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the message you would have us here this morning. And may the meditations of my heart and the words I speak be acceptable in your sight. Help us to remember to trust you always. In Jesus' name, amen. There's irony in the selection of today, the text for this week. For two days ago was 9-11, a date when we mourn the loss of life in such numbers in the terrorist attack of New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania. And we read a story of a miraculous rescue through an impossible barrier with subsequent loss of life of a pursuing nation while a song is sung in the praise of victory. We remember the false reports of Muslims in the country singing and dancing with joy on, at devastation on 9-11. We were outraged at such a celebration that it could occur. Those lies were exposed, but there are still some who cling to that image. So how do we, as people of God, celebrate the destruction of an Egyptian enemy in the sea with dancing and singing and feel good about ourselves? There is a rabbinic teaching that says that when the Israelites crossed the sea and were safe, a cheer broke out in heaven. Then when the sea crashed down on the pursuing Egyptian army, another cheer went up in heaven. But God turned to the angels and said, Why do you rejoice when my children have drowned in the sea? With this, as any other miracle story, we tend to want to explain it, hoping that there might be something more believable that we can grasp and 
know how it happened. It's exciting to focus on Charlton Heston and Cecil B. DeMille, parting of the Red Sea and the run for your life at the crashing of the waves as they exited the riverbed. But today we're going to look at being in the sea. Only the power and presence of God is in the midst of the journey through the wilderness. Moses stretched out his hand. Did you get that? Even with an angelic tornado, with the walls of water on either side and a dry seabed under their feet, there was effort required. God rarely says, sit back, I've got this. Just watch. No. If you go back to the beginning of the story, Moses on the mountain talking to a bush that was burning, he hears a voice saying, I will save my people. You go. God works through the efforts of God's people. What are you willing to stretch out so that God can work with you and from you? Stretch out your hand, sure, but stretch out your resources? Stretch out your security? Stretch out your worldview? Your belief that only people who look like you and sound like you and believe like you can be followers of God? What are you willing to stretch out so that God can bless your effort with transformation that just might be your own transformation instead of the folks out there. Did Moses know what was going to happen when he stretched out his hand? Well, it's hard to tell because the text isn't clear, but I believe he did. And God made a way where there was no way because Moses trusted enough to stretch out. The result was no more than he'd ever had imagined, which is often what happens when we dare to stretch out when we dare to take the risk. We might even become more than conquerors. A word like that conjures up all sorts of images, similar sorts of images that arise when contemplating both the story of the drowning Egyptians and the song of joy sung by Moses and Miriam on the shore of the Sea of Reeds. As a story cheering the demise of the enemy, particularly one that has been as oppressive as the Pharaoh and his army presented earlier in the book of Exodus is an expected response. It's a human response. We cheer when the bad guy gets it in the end. I mean, that's what movies are all about, right? No one is supposed to feel sorry for the captor. We can dance and sing to the tambourine with freed, uh, the freed slaves, the Israelites. The problem comes when the story leaks into reality because reality is never clear and neat. The good guys are often confused with the bad guys and the bad guys are people too. It's certainly true that the song of Moses that he sings and when Miriam takes up the chorus and dances revels in those that are wiped out. The horse and the rider are thrown in the sea. It is a dead washing up on the shore that brings the response. But looking carefully at the song that Moses sings, it is more about God and what God has done for God's people than about how awful the enemy is. Maybe that should be our focus too. It is clear that the rabbis were uncomfortable with this story, which is why the teaching on this event includes the heavenly sadness of the death of the Egyptians. The struggle is a life and death struggle that can't be denied, that there will be suffering and that there will be blood spilled, which is the hard truth. But humility in the face of victory is something worth cultivating in a real world in which we live. Such humility embraces the truth that we are still wandering through the wilderness. God bless you. In the midst of the sea of doubt, despair, fear, anxiety, only God 
knows the way out. And God's desire is to work through us. The gospel reading is no accident. The parable of the unforgiving servant. And the epistle reading is even more poignant. And do not judge. Do not consider your advice higher than someone else's. You're right, they're wrong. No. You are right for you. And God will take care of working the rest of it out. This quote attributed to St. Augustine gives us a glimpse into God's plan. And listen to these words carefully. You do not make sense of this world by God's will. It is the will of man that makes it a living hell here on earth. Tis only the will of men that can change it. And God knows that. It's only through working through us, changing our attitudes and the way we are and the way we respond that can draw the lost to him. It's man's will to choose to forgive or not forgive. That's, that's the only way God's will can be done. There is no end to God's forgiveness, as we see in the parable. Therefore, are we modeling God's example? Or are we too anxious for revenge or to show and celebrate the demise of evil? Or are we willing to risk forgiveness and show the lost a way to redemption? As we are in the sea of our daily lives, are we too focused on our own journey and to heaven than to show God's grace and love to those around us, even our enemies, to allow God to use our very being to reveal his glory? The choice is you, yours. And I pray that our journey through the wilderness will open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the lost to the oppressed, to the cries around us, and also that God will use us to take action and live out the gospel. The gospel hymn, Come Out the Wilderness, claims, did you love everybody when you came out the wilderness? Did your soul feel happy when you came out the wilderness, leaning on the Lord? And I hope you celebrate the way that Richard sang that song as his ancestors have sung that song. In this week's story behind the song, I shared that Nat Turner, who led the slave rebellion, actually used Come Out the Wilderness. So our lives are journeying in a sea every day. But are we willing to do what he's telling us to do? Are we willing to even give ourselves for the, the sake, for the souls of others? Not to rejoice in evil when it's defeated, but to cry tears for the sadness of the loss of those souls. For it grieves our Heavenly Father. Amen. I would like for you to see this image and take it with you as you leave today. This image is an image of forgiveness and not forgiving. And I could preach a whole sermon on this, but I'm not. But I think this image tells you if you are willing to forgive, it leads to life. It leads to being alive. If you choose not to forgive, for whatever your reasons, the other side is what you see. And the damage is done more to you than it ever could be done to your enemies. God is in control. He needs us to listen to his voice. And he's telling us to forgive. As we come to our, uh, our time of commitment, again, I want to thank you for 
your generous donations for helping keep this ministry alive. Um, I would ask that if you are watching or listening from Swatch that you would mail um, your donations to Center United Methodist Church, the checks made to Swatch. Sue has been so gracious to deposit those in Swatch's account, um, and uh, we appreciate your help. Center, uh, center donations can be mailed to center as well. Uh, they can be left here in the pews for those that are here. And they can also be, uh, you can also give online at www.umcfcenter or text the donation to 719-628-1830. And there is, there is a fee attached with those. And this morning I do want to, want to, uh, Say hi to Roberta Rogers, who's watching this morning, uh, Hillary Conroy, who's watching, and Charlene Schaefer. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, as we sing our hymn of commitment, let us stand. Go in peace into God's world to serve and help others. Go in confidence of God's presence with you. Go into this world with messages of hope and reconciliation. Go in love. Amen. And as we go forth this morning, we'll be singing, They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love.
as you go into the sea this week, whatever may face you, know that God is with you. He is before you. And that he may be asking you to reach out and stretch out and do some things that maybe you hadn't thought of. So let him guide you. Thank you for being here this morning and God bless you.